Welcome. Today we shall be looking at the pharmacology of antipsychotics. Antipsychotic medications are primarily used to treat psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorders, and acute agitation. These drugs are broadly categorized into two classes, the typical or first generation antipsychotics and a typical or second generation antipsychotics. Typical antipsychotics work by blocking dopamine D2 receptors, while atypical antipsychotics target both the D2 receptors and serotonin 5H2A receptors. The overall therapeutic goal of these drugs is to reduce both the positive symptoms and the negative symptoms of psychosis. When looking at the dopamine hypothesis, the dopamine hypothesis suggests that psychosis, particularly in schizophrenia, is linked to excessive dopaminergic activity in the mesolimbic pathway. This antipsychotic medication exert the effects by blocking the dopamine D2 receptors. The therapeutic effect is observed with a D2 receptor occupancy between 60 to 80 percent. However, when this occupancy exceeds 80 percent, there is a heightened risk of extrapyramidal side effects, and while dopamine is the central focus, other neurotransmitters, for example serotonin and glutamate, are also implicated in the pathophysiology of psychosis. Antipsychotic medications can be classified based on generation and receptor binding profiles. Typical antipsychotics include drugs such as haloperidol flufenacin, and clopromazine. These are potent D2 blockers. Atypical antipsychotics on the other end include drugs such as risperidone, olanzapine, clozapine, and quetiapine. They combine dopamine and serotonin antagonism. This classification also reflects their side effect profiles, their clinical efficacy, and especially regarding the negative symptoms and extrapyramidal side effects. When looking at the pharmacokinetics, antipsychotics are generally well absorbed orally and they undergo a significant fast pass metabolism in the liver. These drugs are highly lipophilic, allowing them to easily close the blood brain barrier. Most of these drugs are metabolized by liver enzymes, particularly the cytochrome P450 enzymes. Their half life varies, often allowing once daily dosing. A depot all along acting injectable formulations are available for both typical and atypical antipsychotics, helping to improve the adherence in chronic patients. In the pharmacodynamics, the primary mechanism of action is dopamine D2 receptor antagonism, particularly in the mesolimbic pathway. This reduces the positive psychotic symptoms, and atypical antipsychotics also block serotonin 5H2A receptors leading to a reduced extrapyramidal side effects and an improved efficacy against negative symptoms. These drugs often affect other receptors such as histamine, H1, alpha-adrenergic and mascarinic receptors, contributing to the side effects such as sedation, orthostatic hypotension and anticholinergic symptoms. When looking at the mechanism of action, Antipsychotics work by altering the brain chemistry, specifically by affecting the neurotransmitter signals. This helps to reduce psychotic symptoms which are the positive and the negative symptoms. Antipsychotics primarily target dopamine, but also they target serotonin, norepinephrine and other neurotransmitters depending on the specific drug that is in use. The first generation antipsychotics work by inhibiting dopaminergic neurotransmission and their effectiveness is best when they block about 72% of the D2 dopamine receptors in the brain. The first generation antipsychotics also have a noradrenergic, cholinergic, and histaminergic blocking action. When looking at the second generation antipsychotics, this class of drugs work by blocking the D2 dopamine receptors as well as serotonin receptor antagonist action. The 5H2A receptors subtype of serotonin receptor is the most commonly involved receptor.
Antipsychotic toxicity can manifest in several forms, where central nervous system depression, cardiac arrhythmias, especially QT prolongation, and life-threatening neuroleptic malignant syndrome are critical risks. With clozapine, though effective, carries a risk of agranulocytosis, myocarditis, and seizures. Regular monitoring of white blood cell counts, liver function test, and electrocardiogram is essential when using this medication, especially in vulnerable populations. When looking at the indications of antipsychotics, these antipsychotic medications are indicated in a range of psychiatric and neurodevelopmental disorders. The primary indications include schizophrenia, acute minor and bipolar disorders, and psychotic depression. They are also used in Tourette syndrome, Huntington's disease, acute agitation, and autism-related irritability. Off-label uses of antipsychotic include delirium and behavioral disturbances in dementia, and although caution is warranted due to increased mortality risk in elderly patients. The side effect profile of antipsychotics varies between typical and atypical agents. Atypical agents are more associated with metabolic syndrome, including weight gain, insulin resistance, and dyslipidemia. Hyperprolactinemia can also result in galactoria and menstrual irregularities. Sedation, dry mouth, and blood revision are common anticholinergic effects. Extrapyramidal symptoms associated with antipsychotics include dystonia, akathisia, Parkinsonism, and tardive dyskinesia. Absolute contraindications of antipsychotics include a known hypersensitivity to the drug, a history of clozapine induced agranulocytosis, and when looking at the relative contraindications, they include cardiovascular disease, liver function, seizures, dementia related psychosis, and where there is an elevated risk of stroke and mortality. Always you need to assess the benefit-risk ratio before initiating the therapy in this population. The nursing responsibilities for patients who are taking antipsychotics include a frequent monitoring of the vital signs, weight monitoring, glucose level and lipid profile assessment. You need to watch for extra pyramidal symptoms and signs of neuroleptic malignant syndrome, educate the patients on the importance of adherence, recognizing early side effects and the need for regular lab monitoring. Long-acting deeper formulations should be considered for patients with poor compliance. When looking at the high yield points, risperidone and olanzapine are the common first-line atypical antipsychotics. Clozapine, on the other end, is the gold standard for treatment of resistant schizophrenia, and typical antipsychotics are more likely to cause extrapyramidal symptoms, whereas atypicals are associated with metabolic side effects. Depot injection can significantly improve adherence, particularly in chronic conditions, and always you need to tailor the drug choice to the patient's symptom profile and comorbidities.